Welcome to another video. I'm going to use this video to show you the four essential steps you need to take whenever you're doing mathematical induction. So the problem I have right now is to prove that 7 raised to power n minus 6n minus 1 is divisible by 36 for all n in the set of natural numbers. So if we count from 1, 2, 3 and we keep going, as long as n is one of those numbers, that the answer you'll get will always be divisible by 36. So I'm going to show you the four steps and we'll be done. The first thing you need to do is to write the proposition. So the proposition is what you expect it to show. So I'm going to show it this way. I'm going to say step one. Step one, okay, is write the proposition. Write the proposition. Okay, and the proposition we have, which we're going to say the proposition that is based on n, I write it as p sub n, um, is such that 7 raised to power n minus 6n minus 1 is divisible by 36. Now, a nice way to write divisible by is always to say, I can write this as 36 times some number. So I'm going to call that number m. By the way, m has to be a whole number. That's the meaning of divisibility. If you say a number is divisible by 3, it means if you divide that number by 3, you'll get a whole number as your answer. You won't get a fraction, you won't get a decimal, you'll get a whole number, which is any number including 0. I mean, any integer um, including 0. Okay, any natural number or whatever you call it. But it has to be a whole number. So 0 is also part of that. So we're going to say where m... Um, m is in the set of whole numbers m is a whole number okay so we can write that as a condition so this is the first line of your proof the proposition that whenever you have this you're going to get 36 m because the question says you should find um, you should prove this that this is always true as long as n belongs to um, the set of natural numbers from 1, 2, 3, 4, and the rest. So we can't use 0 in this case. Okay. Now, um, so here we go. Let's go to um, the second thing. So what is the step 2? So we say step 2 is to test. So remember, n is supposed to be either 1 or 2 or 3 or 4. So you look at the question and say, um, I'm just going to pick one of the numbers that I know I can obviously test quickly and see that it works. So you notice that um, we're going to test, uh, we'll take a proposition. So when n is 1 or when n is 2 or when n is 3, you just pick the one that's easy and obvious to everybody. So I can do, I can actually do two. So we can say step two is to test uh, some n. Okay, so we're going to test some n. So we, in this case, we might say um, proposition for n equals 1. So when n equals 1, what you're going to have will be 7 raised to power 1 minus 6 times 1. Okay, uh, minus 1. What would that give you? This is going to be 1, 7 minus 6 minus 1. Well, 7 minus 6 minus 1 is 0. Now, can you write 0 as 36 times a whole number? Yes because this is the same thing as 36 times 0. Okay, and because 0 is a whole number, we say that this is true. This proposition 1 verifies that we can write 0 as this, or 0 is divisible by 36. Well, it looks like 0 is not the nicest number um, to get, because anything will divide 0, so maybe we should pick another number. So let's try a proposition, let's pick, but we don't want to go too far, let's pick 2. So let's say we go and say we have um, proposition and um, we pick n equals 2. It would be such that, so we have 7 squared minus 6 times 2 minus 1. What will that give us? We're going to have 49 minus 12. 49 minus 12 is 37. 37 minus 1 is 36, which is equal to 36 times 1. So, 
this is also correct. So at least you've seen that if you take the, uh, the third one, if n is 3, 7 raised to the power 3 minus 18 minus 1, I'm sure it's going to give you a number divisible by 36. Let's go to the third step. So the third step is the easiest step because you're just going to make an assumption. Okay, so step 3. Step 3. Step three is, or maybe this is the easiest. The easiest is to state the proposition, and then the, the second easiest is to make an assumption. Step three is to assume, okay, assume proposition is true, is true, is true for n is equal to some k. We don't know what k is, okay? k could be any number, okay? We already tested two numbers and it's true, but let's say we don't even know. We want to go to a bigger numbers. You're going to say that proposition k um, um, is such that 7 raised to power k, um, where is it? Minus 6k minus 1 is equal to 36m we're going to assume that is true. Okay, so this is an assumption that is essential. This is actually the most, it is one of the easiest lines to write, but it's, it is the most important thing you need to write before you do the actual work. Because the next step, which is step four, is the proof. Step four, okay, is we have to write a proposition for P of k plus 1. So all we're saying is that it is true for any k as long as k belongs to this set that we specified from 1, 2, 3, 2, whatever number you want to get to. But we want to say that if it is true for that number, then it's true for the number immediately after it, so which is k plus 1. So we're going to write the proposition for p sub k plus 1, which will be equal to, we just need to change the k to k plus 1, and we need to prove that whatever we get here is divisible by 36. And once you're able to do that, you're good. So we're gonna say this is seven to the k plus one minus six. Instead of six times k, we're gonna say k plus one, okay, minus one. Okay, now we know it's gonna be a multiple of 36, but we have to show that. So let's see what we do. Uh, what we have here will be equal to this is going to be mm, 7 to the k. See, the 7 to the k times 7. So this is 7 to the k multiplied by 7 minus 6k. If you distribute this, it will be minus 6 minus 1. Well, if you keep going, you can simplify this to look like this. 7 times 7 to the k. And this is minus 6k minus 7. Okay, see this would be a lot, listen, you want to look for something that looks like this, but this and this are not the same. You have 7 to the k, you have minus, uh, that's not okay. I need to be able to produce 1, produce 6k, produce 7 to the k. I have 7 to the k, I have 6k, but this is 7 and I cannot factor out 7 unless I can multiply this by 7 but it's going to change the quantity that I have so what I'm going to do is so remember this is the toughest part okay it is where you use what you have assumed was true to modify what you have so you can get what you're looking for so now what I'm going to say is I need to produce this so I can factor out 7 which will leave me with this but there's no 7 here. So what if I put the 7? I introduce the 7, and but it's going to change this to negative 42. What if I add back whatever I have added? So watch this. What if we say this is equal to 7 times 7 to the k minus, I'm going to multiply this by 7. So it's going to be 7 times 6k. This is not supposed to be there. And then I'm going to write minus 7, which is here. But it, this is supposed to be 6k. But right now it has become 42. So because it's now negative 42k, but what I'm supposed to have is negative 6, I have to add back 36k. Now, I have not changed what was here because negative 42 
plus 36K will give me back my negative 6K. So I'm good. So what I'm gonna do now is write this as, I can factor out seven from here. Do you see that? So what I have now is seven times seven to the K minus 6K minus one plus 36K. But I said, this is true. And if this is true, then it means I can just take whatever I claimed from the beginning that is true, that I can replace 7 to the x minus 6k minus 1 with 36m, which shows it a multiple of 36. So I'm going to say here that this is 7 uh, multiplied by, this now is replaced by 36m plus 36k. And as you can see, it looks like I can factor out 36 from both of these, so this is the same thing as 36. Go back in at 7, and this is going to be 36 um, plus k. 7m rather, 7m plus k. This is what I was saying. Because m, we said m is a whole number, so 3, 7 times a whole number is another whole number, plus this is a whole number because it is a natural number. Remember, k is one of the n's, we just chose a random n. So the sum of two whole numbers is another whole number, so this is a whole number, and therefore this expression is a multiple of 36. So just write it here, which is divisible by 36. Okay, and you're done with your proof because that's all you need to show. Never stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.